from my perspective, as I look at uh, tax policy, one of the things I think we should always be driving towards is fairness. And as our witnesses have talked today, this is an unfair burden. In Illinois, we are one of those donor states that uh, Mr. Swazi talked about, uh, 10 states that are sending more to the federal government than we get back. In fact, in Illinois, it's estimated that we are sending $40 billion a year more to the federal government than we're getting back. And again, from my perspective, forcing any Americans, and in, in my case, people from Illinois, to pay federal tax, tax on money they've already paid to fund the priorities of the state and our local communities is double taxation. Plain and simple, it's wrong. Uh, but because of the new cap, that's exactly the situation. Thousands of people in our communities and in my district are finding themselves in. In my district in Illinois alone, 42 percent of the filers use the SALT deduction, and the average deduction is higher than the new cap. This is to say the SALT deduction has affected a broad swath of my uh, district, and certainly some of those people are at the upper income levels. But many of those people are working class families who are struggling to make ends meet. And I've heard from my constituents consistently stuck this year with a higher tax bill. In fact, one constituent uh, wrote to me after she found out her tax bill increased more than $4,000 under the new GOP tax bill uh, due to the SALT restriction. She's from Grays Lake, a town in my district, and she wrote, this all goes without saying it would be so much easier to stomach a tax increase if the increased amounts were actually going towards something like expanded medical coverage for people or food stamps or education spending. In our case, however, she continues, we are paying thousands of dollars more for no reason at all, while the rest of the country, especially those 21 percent tax corporations, get much needed tax relief." End quote. Those were her words. I could not agree with her anymore. The burden of this tax law, which overwhelmingly benefits the most fortunate Americans and corporations, was laid on just a handful of states like Illinois. Many of those states, the states that are paying more to the federal government than they're getting back, many of those states, in fact, of the people who have spoken today, we represent the states that are the 10 most highest per capita federal tax states. Illinois taxpayers already pay significantly more than national per capita average in federal taxes even though our state receives far less than the national per capita average in federal spending. We, we are paying around $1.30 for every $1 we receive back. Restricting the SALT deduction exacerbates this problem and seems to be a measure designed to punish <coughs> states like Illinois. I hope we can find a way to work together in a bipartisan way to roll back this damaging cap and bring tax relief to the constituents I and my colleagues represent. There are multiple proposals in the work, and I want to highlight the work of two of my neighbors in Illinois delegation, Representatives Underwood and Caston, and thank them for their leadership in introducing H.R. 1757 to fix the salt cap reduction. It's that kind of leadership we need that will try to bring us together to address this issue. But the impact's really on our communities. And Commissioner Lineback, I'll start with you. you know, we talk about communities that are closer to the median income. Closer, the working class communities that are struggling to fund their schools, their parks, their first responders. What's the impact you're seeing in your county on this SALT deduction, to the, the limit on the SALT deduction to those communities? Let me touch on a different aspect. When you look at the county, we don't uh, operate schools in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we raise $144 million a year from our county property tax. A hundred million of that goes to run our jail, our courts, our sheriff's department, our public defender, our district attorney. That is the bulk of our property tax money. Uh, if you want to ask about impact, it's public safety and criminal justice. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, maybe I'll turn to the mayors. You're seeing in your communities, Bayville, as you described it, is a uh, not a, a wealthy. Uh, community, but it's a community that's profoundly affected. What do you see as the impact? I'm, I'm sorry, would you repeat that question? The, the impact this cap on the deduction is having on your ability to provide services like schools, uh, libraries, parks, well, things we all depend upon. Well, if we've got to reduce, if we've got to reduce taxes, we have to reduce services. We fund the local firehouse for over $350,000 a year. We have only a $5 million budget. We have roads to take care of. We run a water department. And we are going to have to cut back at various places. And, and I'll reclaim my time. Uh, Lieutenant Mitchell, you talked about it. 
talking about fire departments. It's affecting your ability to protect the community, to protect folks like us, make sure we're safe at night during the day in our homes. What impact is it having in your community? Well, I think the long-term effect will be the ripple effect, of, again, of, of adequate staffing and training uh, for our, our men and women that serve. Uh, thank you. And, and I'm with, uh, running out of time, but again, I'll just emphasize, thank you all for being here, sharing the impact this tax is having. The emphasis should be on having a system that's fair, that's accretive, that's growing our economy and strengthening our communities. This tax is doing the exact opposite, and that's why I think together we're here. Good. saying we need to time has expired. With that, uh, I yield back. Dr. Ferguson.